or whatever that means. I guess I don't graduate from the DPW, but um, I'm sorry that I missed the showcase. Uh, I was teaching this afternoon, but I remember those events and project group meetings to be uh, pedagogically inspirational times when I was in the DWRL. Um, although I was a very average DWRL student, um, my Drupal site was pretty blah. Uh, I just just tweeted for the first time like in the last six months. Um, but the DWRL convinced me of the value of digital pedagogies, and I remain committed to designing my courses to engage online students reading and writing as much as possible. Um, in many ways, it was my experience in the DWRL that opened the door to the job that I have now as uh, education, uh, which actually is technically my title at the company. Where, I guess startups have a kind of fun sense of humor. Um, uh, the internet startup, Rap Genius. <laughs> So despite my averageness in the DWL, when I started teaching at a local high school, uh, I quickly became the technology guy, uh, which meant that many of my colleagues were asking me how to do really basic things in Google. But I also took many of the lessons that the, and tools that I learned in the DWL into my curriculum, having students write wikis and blogs as part of my English curriculum. Uh, fast forward two years to this past summer, I was procrastinating on a site I noticed coming up a lot in searches for rap lyrics. Uh, the final chapter of my dissertation was on the idea of the hip-hop novel, uh, so I was spending some time listening to rap music and uh, reading the lyrics. Um, for those that don't know, Rap Genius is a Wikipedia-like uh, website for rap lyrics, an interactive archive of hip-hop culture that has become the largest uh, rap website on the planet. Um, as with Wikipedia, uh, the website is overseen in part by a small staff. They only employ 12 people, um, but most of the content is created by users who sign up free accounts and managed by an ever-growing intellectual community of users given higher levels of access as editors uh, and moderators. Um, I was attracted to the site uh, because of their stated mission to critique rap as poetry. Um, and I got pretty into it over the summer. My rap IQ was rising higher than uh, my dissertation page count. They give you points for your explanations and things like that on the website. Um, but it was a scholarly pursuit. Uh, as you can see here, um, this is taken just a few days ago. I slipped in my uh, ranking as an LP scholar, but I still remain uh, the number one most dead or uh, Yasmin Bay scholar. Uh, so you get these little scholarly rankings there. Um, and in all seriousness, you know, you're creating these annotations of text online, and you can be pretty scholarly about it um, and, and, and rhetorical about it as well. Um, at some point, I realized that I could use the site in my classes, and not just for, for hip hop. Um, I had been excited when somebody in the lab, when I was a, a project leader, introduced Digo as an annotation platform, although it was pretty clunky, if I remember, uh, when I tried to use it in courses in DWRL. Uh, Rap Genius had clearly developed a, an annotation platform that allowed any user to produce good looking annotations uh, with ease. There's no coding involved, there's a few uh, key, key tricks. Um, I clicked the contact us button and I sent a message asking if it was cool if I could upload to The Great Gatsby uh, and have my high school students annotate it. Uh, one of the founders responded. Uh, he was enthusiastic. We talked on the phone. I thought that was pretty neat, you know, just that I emailed the website and they basically called, called me. Um, but that's clearly not the end of the story. Um, I decided to make Rap Genius an integral part of uh, my course, a uh, junior English course, a high school English course. Having students annotate text weekly, not just Gatsby, but Wayne Carlos Williams' poems, Langston Hughes' poems, Gwendolyn Brooks, passages from uh, the Bluest Eye. Uh, I uploaded all my course texts to the site. And I think the students were really excited at the time. Many had heard of the, of the site looking up lyrics. Um, it added a kind of uh, game like aspect to, the, to close reading. Um, as one of my students put in a survey at the end of the first term, Rap Genius gives English class a hip, modern edge. Um, <laughs> there was nothing radical about my original assignment for this DWRL audience. I'm sure you guys are all doing much more complicated things. As I said, I was a very average student when I was here. Still don't really understand what Second Life is. This is the first <laughs> time that I ever used Kino. Um, but this is what, you know, I did my original, I did learn PB Works when I was here, and I put my original assignment on PB Works. And I never kept tabs, you know, I didn't have at the time a, a little uh, page view clicker or whatever, but it soon became pretty clear that Rap Genius was passing around my assignment um, as I continued going. Um, as we all know, annotation is a basic skill across disciplines, uh, obviously, but especially in literary studies. Um, as Billy Collins uh, writes in a poem uh, on marginalia, 
we've all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen if only to show we're not just lays in an armchair turning pages. We pressed the thought into the wayside, planted an impression along the verge. Um, it's a tradition of reading, as Collins reminds us, that dates back at least to medieval monastic scribes and the medieval manuscripts they copied. Um, but as Will pointed me to an uh, article in the Chronicle of Higher Ed, there's this new idea of, maybe it's not that new, of social uh, reading. Um, and I think that this was also really clear from my experience with my students using Rap Genius. That this was a powerful new way of thinking about the relationship between readers, text, between readers and other readers, and between readers and authors, one that radically alters Collins' vision of a sol solitary reading uh, experience. Uh, as Jennifer Howard writes in that article in the Chronicle of Higher Ed, uh, online, a book can be a gathering place, a shared space where readers record their reactions and conversations. Those interactions ultimately become part of the book, too, a kind of amplified marginalia. And I wish she hadn't used that term and I'd come up with myself, because I think it really beautifully describes uh, what Rap Genius is doing, especially since it starts as a, a site focused on lyrics. Um, I spoke to my students about the importance of digital literacy in terms of preparation for and success in college, and that Rap Genius was going to help them uh, develop that literacy. We also talked about digital citizenship in an intellectual community, what it means to collaboratively build knowledge together and contribute to an ongoing knowledge building project. And the students got really excited about this. They were really into it, um, both within our own learning community of the classroom, and I had three sections of about 20 kids working on The Great Gatsby, for example, but also within the larger communities as uh, you know, people online started interacting with their annotations and they started getting feedback from uh, strangers within this rap genius community. Um, I promoted several of my students to editors, the, the more engaged ones. Um, Here's a student testimonial from uh, one of my best students who was actually uh, uh, got an internship at Rap Genius this summer. Um, in the most general sense, the site has taken me beyond the classroom. While my English teacher alone used to read my papers, uh, my work is now uh, available to a much larger community. A single set of eyes has transformed into hundreds of views from Facebook and Twitter. Ideas that used to sit forgotten in Times Roman 12-point font double-spaced papers are now part of a permanent database of knowledge. This is nothing new to you guys, I'm sure, but online writing helps students to reconceive of their writing. It's not just for a teacher, but for a reading public. Um, audience is suddenly much easier to imagine when you might get upvoted, which is Rap Genius's term for like, um, or receive a suggestion to an annotation that you've uh, graded. Um, or you might get a message through the, through the social network from, a, from your teacher, or from a classmate, or even from a public user. Um, I also discovered unanticipated lessons in what my students were doing on Rap Genius. The multimedia potential for explanations allowed me to discuss visual rhetoric uh, with them as well. And I had several students that really just taught me so much about using images in their annotations. Um, and so that's a little shout out to my, my, my videos of heaps. Um, I had one student in particular, a second language student from China, who used images quite beautifully in her posts. Um, students with less verbal but more visual skills surprised me with their critical and thoughtful use of images in their explanations. Uh, sometimes students who weren't big talkers in class uh, found a voice through their, their uh, online writing on Rap Genius. Um, about halfway through the fall semester, the news came out that Anderson Horowitz, uh, the premier venture capital firm in Silicon Valley, um, was going to invest $15 million in Rap Genius. Uh, they've funded Twitter and uh, Groupon and uh, I think Facebook as well, partially. Um, a few days later, one of the founders, Elon Zecker, emailed me asking if the company could fly me to New York to meet with the dean of Columbia University to help them pitch the idea of using Rap Genius in the core curriculum, putting the Iliad on Rap Genius and having the entire freshman class annotate. Um, so I flew to New York and I hung out with the founders, Elon uh, Mahfad and Tom. I met with the dean of Columbia. Uh, everything went really well, and when I said my goodbyes, Elon asked me, he said, if you can get your family to move to New York, uh, you've got a job. Um, so now, Rap Genius has hired me to be there, as I said, education czar, um, taking the lead on the company's educational initiatives. At the same time, uh, and just one sort of side note that I, I didn't actually write up is that um, when Mark Anderson talks about this investment that they put into Rap Genius, he, he recalls when he first sort of helped create Mosaic, one of the first web browsers. 
And he says, the one thing that we didn't get a chance to do at that time that we were thinking about that was a crucial part of the plan for the original web browser was an annotation tool. And it just didn't happen. There's a longer story there. But the hope is that you know, their investment is the idea that Rap Genius will become the annotation tool of the internet. That's what the $15 million uh, is towards. Um, and another really cool thing that happened when this all went down was that the, a lot of the press mentioned you know, a high school teacher in Texas that had used Rap Genius to put up The Great Gatsby. It never got a name mentioned, but this high school class was vaguely mentioned. And The Great Gatsby was linked from newspapers and magazines like Forbes when this news came out. And of course, when you go to The Great Gatsby, and I'll show you in a second, on Rap Genius, it's all my students writing. So basically, Forbes was footnoting in one way or another writing that my students had done on Rap Genius in my class, which was, I think, pretty neat. Um, so at the same time that they're developing these educational initiatives, uh, Rap Genius is also growing beyond its hip hop roots and expanding its interactive archive to include uh, rock music. Um, they're calling that Stereo IQ. Um, Justin Tremel, I've been talking with about trying to get him to use uh, Stereo IQ in his rhetoric of rock and roll class here in the DWL, um, as well as classic uh, and contemporary works of literature. Uh, Poetry Brain has become the sort of hub for the literary and historical texts. Um, all of this stuff is still housed on rapgenius.com, and all of this stuff is very much in development, but eventually there's going to be a rollout of different annotation platforms for different kinds of communities. Um, Poetry Brain, in just a couple last couple weeks, you know, I talked to a, call, a friend of mine from Columbia University who's a novelist who's in the middle of a book tour and convinced him to put up the first chapter of his new novel, which was published like two weeks ago. And now it's on Rap Genius with the audio book embedded on the right sidebar because you can do things like put YouTube and SoundCloud and uh, other things on the right sidebar. And so now Poetry Brain Rap Genius is also emerging as a kind of promotional tool for artists. Uh, we verify, we've been verifying rappers and having rappers explain their own raps and drop mixtapes on the site um, and as a way of promotion. And so I heard there was a, a digital web life and design conference in Munich on Sunday. The founders of Rap Genius spoke and they were speaking about this as becoming the sort of next, uh, you know, you got, you drop your album, right? You drop out of the DWL and then you drop your rap album. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to Facebook it, you're going to Twitter it, you're going to Instagram it. And more and more, especially for rap artists and maybe now for, for novelists and poets, you're going to put something on Rap Genius, maybe. Again, the, the name is quickly becoming a misnomer, but there's plans for science genius, law genius, Bible genius, reggae genius, country genius. Obviously, with text, the, 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 the limits are, um, there, there are no limits. Um, there was another company that had a different name called Bourbon that Anderson Horowitz uh, invested in, but nobody knows Bourbon, but they know what it became, which was Instagram. Um, after working with, with Anderson Horowitz. So um, my job, as I see it, is to uh, work with um, educators at every level and network with educators at every level and develop an intellectual community at the site uh, with, with students and teachers. Um, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I was trained as a grad student, um, teacher at heart. Um, now I'm like the 10th employee at an internet startup, which I mean, I don't even know what the plan is for making money uh, with this thing, you know, but I know that they offer me enough money to sort of completely <laughs> uproot my life. Um, and that's not part of my written problems, but um, <laughs> I'm learning as I'm going, and despite my time in the DWL, I'm, I'm obviously not trained for this. Um, I've already created some online resources for teachers at this site, and I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to people during the half hour. I don't want to keep people too long uh, by talking about this. Um, but uh, there's a Rap Genius for Educators page that kind of outlines the different ways it can be used in the class. And I do hope some of you guys might be interested in putting text from your rhetoric courses up on Rap Genius. I think it can be a, a great annotation platform, as I said. Um, in some ways, this is also the start of like a college tour for me. I have a lot of other speaking engagements. This is the very first one um, that I've already got invitations to talk at places. And so if you have any tips about what parts of this made sense to you and what parts didn't when we have a beer, that would be uh, great. But I'm looking forward to talking to some of you guys about how to integrate uh, the site into your, into your classes if, if you're interested. Um, it strikes me that the rhetoric classroom might be a uniquely suited uh, place to, to, to use um, rap genius and annotation platform. Rhetoric teachers could house course texts. Uh, all those thematically related uh, rhetoric of blank texts. 
uh, and have them all linked together on Rap Genius, um, and have students, you know, visually map uh, the controversies within those texts, um, as well as analyze a particular position in a particular text. Um, and then, of course, the composition of annotations themselves or the explanations is itself a rhetorical act, and the questions of ethos come up when one is writing in a place like that, um, and you have an audience pretty much to immediately upvote you or downvote you based on whether you've come correct with your ethos or not. Um, all right, so now I'm going to uh, drop this uh, slideshow and just kind of quickly orient you to the site. Um, Every user gets a uh, profile page like this. Uh, I've been doing some boring sort of stuff lately, so it's not doesn't look that good. But here's an annotation. I'm teaching a hip hop lit course right now, actually. So I was listening to Run DMC with the class. But this is you know, the kind of little explanation of the uh, nursery rhymes that are referenced in uh, in Walk This Way. Um, but that's what an annotation looks like from the profile page. Again, this is where you know. If you were using this in the classroom, you look at your student work kind of as a as a portfolio. Um, <coughs> this is uh, all the great Gatsby work that my students did. Um, <coughs> go in here and see. A lot of this is unexplained because I originally only put up passages, uh, but you can see kinds of stuff that the students create, and we'll work together to create something in a second. Um, there's a really good one down here somewhere. This is when Gatsby is driving with uh, Nick into Manhattan, and they, they pass the, the, the blacks in, in the limo, African Americans in the limo, and uh, it's actually used in one of the first frames of the trailer. It's such a kind of meaningful moment in the text. But you can see here, this is one of my best students writing about you know this idea of like why he's after this sort of rivalry with the African Americans is mentioned at this point in the text. And he basically writes a little you know, dynamic mini essay here that's definitely a good step towards um, towards a, the traditional five page uh, 12 point Roman font uh, essay that he would turn in. Uh, Law Genius already has some text up, you know, ironically the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Um, I can't answer any of the copyright questions by them. You may be wondering those, uh, but I, as far as I know everything's game. If you want to put it on Rap Genius, go for it. Um, but we have a Stanford Law professor who has annotated uh, parts of the uh, digital of the, of the DMCA. Um, we recently verified a Faulkner scholar. So if, you, if, there, if you're an expert in a particular textual field, want to get verified as a scholar on rap genius and annotate something, this guy went to town on a Rose Family, the Faulkner short story. Um, there's still quite a bit of uh, hip hop rhetoric around the site, which is kind of fun um, to do a degree, but also obviously a challenge for me as I start to take this on the road and talk to folks at the you know foreign language department at Stanford University, and there's like you know what's up, player? If something goes on, on the website again, the web the website is in, in transition. But right now it's kind of funny because you've got the DMCA uh, you know song by Congress featuring the Stanford Law Professor. Mark Lemley. So you have to be a little creative about how you upload things. Um, here's Adam Mansbach's new book. I mean, a totally new way of interacting with authors, right? And this is a brand new book. You've got the audio book on the right sidebar here. You've got these green annotations represent uh, you know, authorized, verified annotations by the author. And then this red one is a, a user that's gone on and already annotated this. It just went up a couple days ago. Um, my wife's a biology teacher, so she has put up I'm not going to read the full title. Uh, she's going to be using this in a UT lecture uh, in animal behavior. Um, but again, you know, you have to get creative with the uh, authors and uh, song titles and, and artists, and also produced by Plus One is the, the journal. Um, but really dynamic way to visualize the science going on in the text um, and the students who are. Uh, would be totally new and probably lost in such an academic publication are now going to work through it together and build the knowledge together um, and each take up individual research responsibilities to film in the, in the text. So I just want to do one last thing, which is just show you how it works really quickly by annotating together. I didn't pull it up already. Um, the inauguration day poem. So I'll read it once, maybe, and then uh, I just want to show you what it looks like to create a bubble. So if, some, if a couple of brave souls would sort of offer some kind of reading of one of the lines in the poem, uh, I can show you what an annotation looks like. 
So again, this is the column that was read at inauguration just earlier this week. Uh, one cool thing about Rap Genius is that the stuff gets up so quickly because there's such a vibrant community. So the inauguration speech was up almost immediately. Um, and my sister is a speechwriter for Obama. She said that the annotations are pretty good. Tried to get her to be a verified speechwriter, but no dice uh, with the government. All right. Uh, so let's just try to create one annotation and then go have a beer. How's that? Richard, Richard Blanco, one today. One sun rose on us today, kindled over our shores, peeking over the Smokies, greeting the faces of the Great Lakes, spreading a simple truth across the Great Plains, then charging across the Rockies, one light waking up rooftops under each one, a story told by our silent gestures moving behind windows. My face, your face, millions of faces in mornings, mirrors, each one yawning to life, crescendoing into our day, pencil yellow school buses, the rhythm of traffic lights, fruit stands, apples, limes, oranges, arrayed like rainbows, begging our praise, silver trucks, heavy with oil or paper, bricks or milk, teeming over highways alongside us, on our way to clean tables, read ledgers, or save lives, to teach geometry, or ring up groceries as my mother did for 20 years, so I could write this poem. All of us, as vital as the one light we move through, the same light on blackboards with lessons for the day, equations to solve, history to question, or atoms imagined. The I have a dream, we keep dreaming, or the impossible vocabulary of sorrow that won't explain the empty desks of 20 children marked absent today and forever. Many prayers, but one light, breathing color into the stained glass windows, life into the faces of bronze statues, warmth onto the steps of our museums and park benches as mothers watch children slide into the day. One ground, our ground, rooting us to every stalk of corn, every head of wheat, sown by sweat and hands, hands gleaning, coal or planting, windmills and deserts and hilltops that keep us warm, hands digging trenches, routing pipes and cables, hands as worn as my father's cutting sugar cane so my brother and I could have books and shoes. The dust of farms and deserts, cities and plains mingled by one wind, our breath, breathe. I hear it through the day's gorgeous din of honking cabs, buses launching down avenues, the symphony of footsteps, guitars, and screeching subways, the unexpected songbird on your clothesline. Here, squeaky playground swings, train whistling or whispers across cafe tables. Here, the doors we open for each other all day, saying, hello, shalom, bon giorno, howdy, namaste, or buenos dias, in the language my mother taught me. In every language spoken into one wind, carrying our lives without prejudice as these words break from my lips. One sky, since the Appalachians and Sierras claim their majesty, and the Mississippi and Colorado work their way to the sea. Thank the work of our hands, weaving steel into bridges, finishing one more report for the boss on time, stitching another wound or uniform, the first blush stroke, brush stroke on a, paint, a portrait, or the last floor on the Freedom Tower, jutting into a sky that yields to our resilience. One sky, toward which we sometimes lift our eyes, tired from work, some days guessing at the weather of our lives, some days giving thanks for a love that loves you back, sometimes praising a mother who knew how to give, or forgiving a father who couldn't give you what you wanted. We head home through the gloss of rain or weight of snow, with a plum blush of dust, but always home, always under one sky, our sky, and always one moon like a silent drum tapping on every rooftop and every window of one country, all of us facing the stairs, stars, hope, a new constellation, waiting for us to map it, waiting for us to name it together. Didn't look that long when I uh, looked at it online right before I came here, but <laughs> uh, so Will suggest I, I do a much shorter one. But um, anybody hear anything, even just in that first stanza, that we could annotate? or explain or offer up and drop our knowledge on the interweb. It doesn't have to be particularly deep. We could even imagine if somebody didn't know the geography of the United States and was reading this from afar. What is this? All right. <laughs> um, well, let's pretend that we know. 
Let me just go grab an image of the Smoky Mountains. What do you guys like? I like that one. All right. So uh, you know you can grab just any image ending in JPEG, and then you can go back here. And I'm going to go back and grab a bigger piece of text, peeking over the Smokies. You know, what are the Smoky Mountains anyway? The ones you just pulled a picture of. All right, but we got to write some text too. Are they part of the Appalachian? I think so. No, they're their own. They're their own? All right. How about we just keep it simple for now? We can go back and edit it. Um, the Smoky Mountains are a mountain range in the U.S. They're They're in Tennessee. I'm going to just do a. Uh... All right, so then just dropping the JPEG in, and it's already there. Um, you can see some other annotations here. There's one on Whitman. Uh, similarly, there's, I guess, Richard Blanco's mother. Um, similarly, YouTube URLs is just a matter of dropping in the URL to the annotation bubble. Um, so just to see it again, uh, any, what, you, sir, you had one. Just, oh, all right, so that sounds like it might be a deeper explanation. Uh, one sun rose on us today, that one? Yeah. What did you want to say? Well, just a whole paragraph. OK. Well, one thing they say, you know, one thing that to think about it with your students is, you know, how much of a text do you grab as you're annotating? Um, and this is a pretty big one. I think this person grabbed too much, although they have a nice explanation of, uh, of Whitman. Again, um, in this field, you can just drop in the URLs for YouTube, Twitter, uh, tweets, or whatever, and uh, and for JPEGs or other image files, and then you know, uh, pick and, and things like that. Um, and then it's just a little bit more made-up coding for uh, italicizing something or bold, putting something in bold or creating a link. Uh, creating a link is, is literally just um, you know, you don't need to see this. You all will be able to figure it out yourself. But this is the hyperlink text, and then this is. The URL and that would be a link. So the the programming of it is, is really not even pro or coding of it is not even coding. It's just so easy to use. Um, and uh, I hope that I can talk to some of you guys one on one uh, at the happy hour if you're interested in me putting some text up here. Uh, I can talk more about my experience. But if you guys, I'd also like to hear what kind of stuff you guys are playing with. So thanks for your time. <laughs> Jeremy, one more round of applause, and also. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, so we're off to the whole uh, wall. Probably there will be a first wave of people there. I might be among the second wave as I sort of get things uh, cleaned up. So if you don't see me there immediately, you'll see me there.